They're not quite delayed because the man is still in hospital. Uh, we're told, uh, contrary to earlier reports, that he was in intensive care. They say that's wrong. He's satisfactory with burns. John, how are the people of Hobart coping with this tragedy tonight? This is an absolutely horrific story, an, a, an horrific event for uh, Tasmania, for Australia. Um, it's a strange move there. People are talking about this. They want to know the information. But once they find out, they, they basically reel in horror from what's gone on here. Uh, people are very unhappy. I'm sure it's very upsetting for people here, people all around the country. All right, John, thanks for joining us. John Hill live from Hobart, and we look forward to your reports again tomorrow from Port Arthur. Thanks, Andy. Tonight, the Tasmanian government released the names of some of the 19 patients admitted to Royal Hobart Hospital. ...held 16 innocent schoolchildren and their teacher. Some experts believe the Tasmanian massacre smacks of a copycat crime. They, instead of killing themselves, select this as an option, saying, I'm like that man, he must have the rage I have, and therefore the solution to my dilemma is to do what he did. Australia is no stranger to mass murder. Julian Knight, Wade Frankham and Frank Vitkovich are responsible for some of our most horrific and unpredictable crimes. One in five Australian adults has a mental illness of, of some sort at any one time. It's an enormous percentage. There are calls for guns to be denied to the mentally ill, but health experts say potential mass killers are difficult to diagnose. And we don't know who's going to get flip you know, or, or, or really have um, an episode like this next. There is no way, there's no instrument, there's no way that we have of predicting this situation. According to the FBI's criminal profiles, mass murderers are likely to be relatively young, single men, be paranoid or depressed, they have tunnel vision about their options in life and intend to die when they initiate the attack. In order to become a mass murderer of this magnitude, the individual has to be suicidal, has to believe that life isn't worth living and that other people are responsible for it. The killers responsible for Queen Street and Strathfield committed suicide. The Hoddle Street killer was convicted and remains in jail and tonight the Port Arthur suspect is under police guard. Mark Gibson, 10 News. Murder at a hospital bedside hearing in Hobart this morning. A formal hearing will be held at the hospital later today. As Tasmania comes to terms with the tragedy, details are emerging about the 34 people who lost their lives. The people of Port Arthur are united in their grief. It was a night of reflection across Tasmania last night. No one knows why this tragedy took place, but hundreds are looking for answers through prayer. We pray for the families and friends of all who have lost their lives in the tragedy which has befallen us. With such widespread grief, religious leaders are urging people to stick together. Hang on to one another. Don't be alone today and in these next few days. Have somebody with you. Weep, put your arm around somebody, and uh, we draw strength from one another. This morning, 28-year-old Martin Bryant remains under heavy guard at the Royal Hobart Hospital. Details are emerging of the man accused of our darkest day. The former vegetable salesman inherited the fortune of an elderly heiress and roamed his farm firing guns at random. He's also recovering from the suicide of his father three years ago. In the morning time, he's usually standing outside and uh, walking up and down, and uh, he's looking across the road, and I have spoken to him time after time, just to him good morning, and he just looks at me vaguely, and, and then says, oh, good day, or hello, and it continues on. What sort of fellow was he? Very quiet sort of person. He didn't want to have much conversation with me at all. Bryant is still recovering from burns suffered when the guest house was set alight with three hostages inside. In a bedside hearing this morning, he's been charged with one count of murder. A formal hearing will be conducted later today when more charges are expected. The death toll from the Port Arthur massacre stands at 34. The bodies of two of the three hostages have been found. The third, an elderly woman, remains unaccounted for. And police aren't convinced the death list from Sunday's carnage won't rise further. While 15 injured remain in hospital, police won't know if there are any more bodies until a complete search of the historic area is completed. Mark Gibson, 10 News. And joining us in Hobart now is the Right Reverend Philip Newell, the Anglican Bishop of Tasmania. Thank you.
has been charged with murder. So far, only one charge has been laid against 28-year-old Martin Bryant, and it was done amid extremely tight security during a bedside court. John Hill reports. This is the man accused of shooting 34 people to death at Port Arthur. 29-year-old Martin Bryant remains in hospital in a satisfactory condition, suffering from severe burns. At the same hospital, the grieving families of his victims arrive to identify their bodies. An unpleasant task made worse by the publicity this case has attracted. Get away. No, that's not fair. Get up away, go will away, you? Please, just go away. No, just stop and leave my all right? Emotions are running high in Hobart as the community counts the cost. Overnight, someone daubed graffiti on the hospital's wall. An eye for an eye, it said, a sentiment expressed by many here. No, no. Police have revealed they're it's investigating a threat against Brian's life. There has been at least one uh, veiled threat that uh, this person might be under some, uh, uh, in some danger and uh, we'll respond to that accordingly. If there are any more, we'll respond again. Confusion about Brian's status under the law was clarified when Tasmanian Chief Magistrate Peter Dixon convened a bedside court with Bryant represented by a legal aid solicitor. The hearing lasted just five minutes. Martin Bryant was lying in bed as the magistrate formally charged him with the murder of Kate Elizabeth Scott. Mrs Scott is from Western Australia. She was killed in the restaurant at the Port Arthur historic site. Well, the court was convened, a uh, magistrate, uh, prosecutor, uh, defence counsel, security officers and uh, court clerk were in attendance. The defendant was charged with the charge. Um, the magistrate remanded the defendant in custody to appear again on the 22nd of May. There were no members of his family present. Police said this would be the first of many charges to follow. The defendant didn't make any comment at all during the course of the proceedings. Did he appear interested in the proceedings? He was certainly uh, awake and uh, aware of what was going on. Detectives are continuing to probe the killings. They have to compile a brief of evidence about each of the murders before further charges can be laid. But there's concern in Tasmania about whether Brian can ever receive a fair trial. The Tasmanian Director of Public Prosecutions has warned media organisations he's considering contempt charges against newspapers which publish Brian's picture. Meanwhile, church authorities are doing what they can to comfort grieving relatives. Hobart's Anglican Archbishop calling for a minute silence across Australia tomorrow at 10.30am to remember the victims. If people are prayer, please pray. If you just want to remember uh, and be conscious of those who are suffering and those who've died, join us for that minute silence, half past ten tomorrow. That would make a great national recognition of this event, this tragedy, this massacre. Tasmania's politicians also closed the state's parliament for a week as a mark of respect. John Hill joins us from Hobart. John, how seriously are police taking the threats against this man? Very seriously, Glenn. They've had those threats. They've had phone threats to both the police and the hospital. They've stepped up security around the hospital and also within the hospital. They're very concerned that perhaps people who have uh, some reason to get at this man could get into the hospital and do him some harm. When can we expect more charges be laid? Well, we're not quite certain about that. I'd expect police would be working on those charges now. We could see some, some more tomorrow, perhaps the next few days. But then again, they could wait until May 22nd when he's due to go back to court. There's been some suggestion that it'll be hard to find a jury that hasn't already formed an opinion on this man. This has become a very big issue in Tasmania. The uh, local paper down here, the Hobart Mercury, I suppose broke convention uh, this morning by publishing a full page photo of the man top, uh, top to toe. And uh, that's gone all around the state, of course. Everybody now knows what he looks like. Um, some might say it's contempt. Uh, everybody has now seen him, so issues of identity would be a real problem. John Hill, thanks very much. John Hill reporting there from Hobart. And more details of the massacre are starting to emerge as eyewitnesses tell their stories. The small community of Port Arthur is battling to come to terms with the scale of the tragedy. Peter Morris with that story. The flag at Nabina's public school was today flying at half-mast as wreaths adorned a war memorial at the front gate, all in memory of the two little girls gunned down as they ran from their killer. They had so much to look forward to in life and now it's all been taken away from them. Their mother, 36-year-old Nanette Mekak, stopped at the park for lunch with her daughters. Their father, local pharmacist Walter, was playing golf with a friend. At the end of the day, he hasn't got his... 
hasn't got the net and the two kids. And I, I couldn't give you an insight as to how he's feeling. I, um, I just think that uh, it's like somebody has just torn his heart out of his chest. Floral tributes were also laid at the steps of the Port Arthur Cafe as forensic police continued their investigations into the lunchtime slaying of more than 20 people. Relatives faced the grim task of identifying their loved one's personal items while the real story about the gunman emerged. Simple, nice. I'd, I'd, I'd never had, I'd never seen him do anything wrong or, or I'd never ever, ever suspected that he could have done anything like this. He just found me. And I don't have anything to say about him. As the 35th body was discovered in the ruins of the seascape cottages, investigators revealed that the gunman may well have visited there before coming here and having his lunch. Investigators have been told a couple who tried to book into the seascape bed and breakfast were rudely turned away by a young man with blonde hair several hours before the shooting began at the cafe. They believe proprietors Sally and Glenn Martin were shot dead before the 28-year-old headed to the historical site carrying a large bag thought to contain part of a collection of firearms taken from the cottages. Among those killed were 29-year-old Jason Winter of New Zealand, 71-year-old Ron Jarry of Redcliffs, Gwenda Meander, 67, of Adelaide, and Mary and Merv Howard of Dunstown. This afternoon, discussions were underway to decide the future of the cafe. It's likely to be bulldozed to make way for a memorial remembering those who died. Peter Morris, 10 News. Now the final result of our viewers' opinion on the...